Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over t a team that I used, um, I think on Thursday. Um, I actually recorded it and did try to post it on Saturday, but there were some audio issues and I had to, um, yeah, I guess the audio got deleted. So I have to, I had to uh, redo it today. And um, yeah, so this team is using Shadow Ampharos in the lead with uh, Scrafty as the well, Venusaur is the safe swap, which can be a little rough, but then you come back in with Ampharos to farm up. And then the finisher of Scrafty. So I have been trying to use uh, XL Scrafty in a lot of my games. Um, I tried a million different teams, and uh, this one did pretty well. Also, another team that did pretty well was uh, Alolan Ninetales with Powder Snow in the lead, uh, with Snorlax as the safe swap, and Scrafty in the back. So... I did try Gengar in the front as well with um, Umbreon in the back, so double dark, but uh, that didn't go great either. And um, my XL Scrafty and XL Umbreon are not fully XL'd, but with the best buddy buff um, and a Hundo Scrafty, so that uh, basically like a coupon version of Scrafty, uh, I don't have to level it to 50, so luckily 46 is the highest I need to get it to. And uh, yeah, that's what we're using. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get into these games. I'm gonna show you two sets. Uh, I played three sets with this team um, and I went positive every set, but I will say uh, using Scrafty feels a lot more difficult in Ultra League. Uh, it just feels like you can't fully safe swap or like even if you have two shield advantage at the end, sometimes there's just a charmer. So let's get into the games. Uh, so it felt harder as a closer is basically what my... Uh, thing was there so this lead is not fantastic you actually lose this lead as the shadow Ampharos. but what i like to do is throw the thunder punch and then dip to venusaur even though venusaur is my hard counter um you know we either get the shield advantage here or we bring it really low and sometimes you can catch the cross chop uh, they usually are trying to go over so that they can make sure that you don't get an extra volt switch in and so right here we do catch this but this is not always 100 percent in fact i found it only worked one in like well, almost 50, well, like 40% of the time, let's say. Uh, and lots of Shadow Machamps out there. I don't have a Shadow Machamp fully leveled up. And I'm actually at a Stardust, so... But I am trying. Um, I don't think I actually have the full candy for it either, because I really wanted XP, so I <laughs> I evolved all of my Machamps, and so I used all that candy from the uh, Machop community day. Anyways, back to this game. Uh, Venusaur is actually pretty good against Umbreon, but to say that is the same as Umbreon actually is decent against Venusaur as well. It's a pretty neutral matchup. Uh, I think Venusaur does win, although it does seem a lot harder in um, Ultra League. Obviously, every, uh, Umbreon is just the most insane bulky thing. I will get my Umbreon to 50 at some point, um, I just have to find an Eevee nest, and I know I say that like every single video, I'll find an Eevee nest, but I really want to find an Eevee nest or a drowsy nest and try to finish out, I really want to try Hypno, the Hypno Double Dark team. Um, and we have someone else who submitted a video of Hypno Double Dark, and I'll be posting that as the next video. Um, but yeah, I really want to use it myself. I think Hypno's actually really good. Um, yeah. So yeah, this matchup has obviously gone on a million years. Uh, I think I'll probably let this go, maybe come farm down with Ampharos. This would be two or three volt switches, so not too bad. Uh, they probably won't... Oh, well, they probably will get a move off now because they actually did farm down the Venusaur here. Really good play by our opponent. I think at this point in these games, I was um, 25, like 60 something. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I went 3-2 in the previous set using this team as well. All right, so we do get the farm down here. If they do come in with Machamp, we do have a uh, Thunderbolt here. They actually came in with Raichu. Okay. Uh, I didn't see if it was an Alolan Raichu. <clears throat> Sorry. I didn't see if it was an Alolan Raichu, but okay. That's good for us. It means the foul play is going to be super effective. Uh, they do bring back in Machamp. All you have to do is power up, punch this down. With one shield, you're fine. Uh, like I say, in Great League, Machamp's not a true counter to Scrafty as long as you have a shield. You're dealing out just as much damage as they're dealing out, out to you. So as long as they don't get that cross chop in, which will obviously devastate you, it's not that bad a matchup. You see, they started with about 70% HP, and you're going to end up coming out of this matchup with uh, probably 30% HP. And we almost have another move. We really want to get to this foul play. Luckily, we're really close. Uh, we did lose CMP tie here, though. This could be wild charge. And it is thunder punch. Okay, perfect for us. Oh, we actually barely live. That's the XLs coming in handy there. That's the best buddy buff right there. <laughs> 
And uh, yeah, we are probably going to take this out because this is super effective and Alolan Raichu is very squishy. I've actually seen a lot of people using uh, regular Raichu uh, as well, which is pretty squishy, but still has a lot of play because it does deal a lot of damage. So as long as you have shields, you're good. All right, a uh, fully exiled Jellicent, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 2,500. Um, yeah, we're really good against it. The problem is I really should have switched out to Venusaur here. At least Venusaur is a neutral matchup. Uh, but I've stayed in way too long at this point. Um, and now Galvanch is going to get his lunge off. I don't have to shield it for sure. So I'm going to get shield advantage. I missed the... I missed the click on the Dragon Pulse here, so they get an extra Volt Switch in. And then I'll probably switch out to Venusaur, but now they have a Volt Switch advantage uh, going into the second lunge, which is going to suck. Oh, okay, they let it go, and then I come in with uh, Scrafty here. Okay, I actually like this because you don't have to shield anything on Scrafty. You can farm it all the way down from here. Man, you really, really going through these videos, I, I'm really remembering how uh, how bulky everything is in, in Ultra League. When I'm doing it in real time, it doesn't feel um, as crazy. Uh, they do come in Mach Machamp here, and obviously we're super low, so we're definitely going to get taken out here. Uh, the Machamp's probably going to farm down, but we'll probably end up doing like 60, 65% damage to him, just to show you how like strong Scrafty is into Machamp. They do get an extra counter in there, obviously not great, but this matchup's pretty over as well anyways. Uh, Venusaur is good against both things that are left, uh, the Jellicent and the Machamp, so that's pretty good for us. Um, Jellicent does have... Um, oh, I come back in with Ampharos. Oh, I guess I'm thinking Ampharos is done, and since Venusaur is good against both, I want to alleviate this Machamp of his energy and then um, come in with, and let Venusaur try to sweep through. Only problem I can see here is, is the Jellicent does have a Bubble Beam. That's going to be pretty tough, and a Rock Slide here is obviously going to hurt a lot. So if we get the Rock Slide here, they're going to be super out of energy for uh, uh, when they switch back in, because I imagine they're switching in the Jellicent here. Definitely throw these Frenzy Plants before they get a Bubble Beam off so that you're not debuffed. Uh, but one thing that could really go wrong here, like I said, was that debuff. They're probably going to get to, like, if they want to just go straight Bubble Beam, they probably can get to, like, three Bubble Beams here. Um... Yeah, so this might be tough. I've already used one shield. I'm assuming a bait coming off here on the first one. Uh, and usually they throw the big move second. Um, they did shield while we were not buffed, debuffed, which makes obviously a lot of sense. They did have the shield advantage coming into this Jellicent matchup, so they're probably going to double shield. They did. Um, the only thing we should be worried about, well, obviously the baits are really bad for us, but another thing we have to be worried about is the switch timer because they still have the Machamp in the back. The Machamp still has about 15, 20% HP. Um, after being this debuffed, I, I don't know if we can actually farm it down. Uh, we've already taken two debuffs. I imagine we might take another one unless they were going to go straight. They might've actually tried to go straight shadow ball. That's why I threw here. Oh, they still could go for a shadow ball. So that's why I'm throwing immediately as well on the second one here. Just KO this and try to get into that next matchup. But I think even a cross chop's going to KO us at this point. So the double debuff on the vine whips, I don't think I'm going to make it. Look at how much how little damage we're doing. Yeah, a cross chop definitely KOs us here. Shadow Machamp does a ton of damage. Um, like I said, we're making our Shadow Machamp. Um, we're not really that close, but all we need is regular candy. Luckily, no XLs needed for the Shadow Machamp here, so I imagine I'll get that soon enough. Um, all right, third match here in the first, or third battle in the first match, or set. <laughs> oh, I meant to click the Venusaur here, and um, I remember recording this the first time. Um, really, this was a huge mistake here. I missed the click, which, I mean, it happens. Um, you, you don't I don't have like a piece of tape or anything to show me exactly where the switch is. I know some people do that. And I just missed the switch here, allowing them to get a Volt Switch advantage coming into this matchup. And now they're not leaving this matchup. They're probably double weak to Venusaur in the back. And it this is just like, a, it really feels bad. Um, how It shows really how one mistake can really set you back for the rest of the game. Um, if your opponent plays perfect and you play perfect, you're not going to be able to come back uh, from a mistake most probably. Um, and the lunge is obviously taking us, uh, making us not do as much damage as we uh, would hope to do here. Uh, I'm still not letting Volt Switches through, which is great. They're not getting more advantage upon us, but this doesn't seem great, especially since I believe they shield here. Yep. 
and then we get this, but they Galvantula does win CMP ties. And you're only going to make it to that third Frenzy Plant before they make it to their third uh, lunge. Uh, otherwise, they're going to make it uh, before you each time. So I think I'm going to eat a lunge here and maybe try to farm. Oh, no, we go straight for this. Okay, that's a good play as well. Uh, I also like eating a lunge and just dealing, uh, just getting all that energy. But this is me saying, I don't want you to dump your energy here. Let me just go into that next matchup. And yeah, they were actually weak to Venusaur here in the back. Now, this seems like it would be good, except that they're just going to shield this first foul play anyways. Um, yeah, and then we're going to start getting debuffed uh, to, to all hell. And then they'll probably switch into their um, Galarian Stunfisk after we've been debuffed. Yeah, and then that's just going to be a huge problem, right? Sucks. Uh, maybe I could have baited there, but obviously if I throw a power-up punch and then they don't shield, I'm just done for. And yeah, they get to these bubble beams faster than we get to the foul plays, so that really sucks. So yeah, uh, Scrafty, really good against both the things left here in the back. The problem is Ampharos is really bad against the Stunfisk, and um, it's funny because I was saying just a few days ago I haven't actually run into any Stunfisk ever in Ultra League. Uh, even last season and this season, and now I've started to see the uptick in uh, Galarian Stunfisk. I think I've run into like four or five at this point, so definitely it has to be out there on your radar. I mean, that's why we are running Scrafty, but um, that's tough for us because Scrafty can't do all the work that needs to be done here, and like I said, if I ever switch into Shadow um, of Ampharos, they're just going to be able to farm up a ton on Galarian Stunfisk and then come back into the matchup and throw down onto Scrafty since I'm already so low. Right now an Earthquake KOs us. Um, I remember this. I don't shield this. It actually was a Shadow Ball, which is fine. We resist it. But we're actually going to be within range of Rock Slide pretty much at this point. And they end up coming back in. And um, I don't know what to do here. You see me just like sort of just pressing towards the move then not the move. It's because I know I'm triple debuffed. And it's like, uh, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? I think I end up throwing and then switching in Ampharos, which doesn't make any sense at all. But it didn't really matter. Um, they did exactly what we thought they would do. They debuffed us. And then they knew we couldn't switch out for fear of them being able to farm up a ton. Now, if I had Focus Blast on Ampharos, obviously I could pressure this, especially with no shields. And I did have one shield. Um, but, you know... I actually really love the Dragon Pulse. Um, I think there's a ton of Kingdras out there, and you can end up one-shotting the Kingdra, and I really like that. So, you know, there's a give and take. Also, um, I've said in a lot of my videos, also the um, Purified Ampharos is also a good call. Uh, Return actually does a ton of neutral damage to a lot of the things that um, Thunder Punch would be resisted of. So, all three, any type of Ampharos works here. I think you just have to know what you win and lose against. All right. Uh, Shadow Snorlax. So they do beat you to the first one. And I do like shielding the first one. And then because I, I say they beat you to the first one, they beat you to the first one. If you go all the way up to focus blast, which is what I like to do here, try to get the shield and then swap into Venusaur just to force a swap and try to get, um, try to get Scrafty into that Snorlax matchup. If you can. Now, the problem is superpower does do a lot. It does not one shot Scrafty. It does about, um, 65%. I believe if I remember correctly, uh, at this point, I haven't played in a, a three days. Cause like I, I've told you on other videos, I don't really play on the weekend. So, um, don't do the battles usually. Uh, sometimes I do, but yeah, I haven't, uh, this weekend. So not too scared of the body slams here. Um, we obviously do a lot of damage. I think we can pretty much KO from here. Maybe we don't KO, but we almost KO. I think we'll leave him at 15%. Maybe. I I'm still getting used to Ultra League here, and yeah. But they end up switching to, to Gyarados here. Okay, so I think a Frenzy Plant does do about 70% to Gyarados. So this was an interesting swap in. Uh, it makes sense because we have Ampharos, right? They don't Obviously, they don't want Ampharos in with this um, Gyarados. Um, I mean, I'm obviously not going to shield here. I think even Scrafty could farm this down at this point. And it is an Aqua Tail, which... Oh, I actually didn't know if it would KO. Probably coming back in with Ampharos. This is just too tasty to get into Volt Switches and take it out. Have enough energy for both of my moves, depending on what we think's coming in. And that normal type comes in. I probably want to save Ampharos at this point. He's just got so much energy on him. Um, their timer's not up, so I can come in with Scrafty and try to farm down. 
or if I don't want them to land a superpower, maybe throw a power-up punch. But like I said, it doesn't KO you, so maybe not. Uh, this is pretty fast. This might be a body slam, uh, is my thought process here. All right, it was a body slam. <laughs> oh, they bring in Togekiss. All right, I have literally no play against Togekiss with the uh, Scrafty. And this is what I was talking about in the intro of the video. Um, Ultra League isn't the same as uh, Great League, obviously. And Scrafty has a lot more trouble beating some of its hard counters. Whereas in Great League, it's a lot easier to counter your hard counters with shields. Uh, because things aren't dealing as much damage as they are in... Um, Ultra, or, or, or they're not as bulky, so Scrafty can end up actually just power up throwing some things, and you're not going to power up through any of the Charmers here in Ultra League, so it's a good thing to know. Um, I'll still be looking for more teams for Scrafty to work with. Uh, I really like Hypno is perfect. I just don't have that Hypno. Um, Jellicent's pretty good too. I have a level 40 Jellicent, uh, no XLs, and no way to get those XLs. So probably uh, maybe I'll try it with Jellicent. Uh, level 40 maybe it'll be good enough maybe it won't uh but if you have a level 40 i would definitely try that out maybe even drift blend is actually a good combo with scrafty as well all right uh this matchup's pretty good for us like i said before obviously we're resisting these counters now um they did land the rock slide i thought they were going to bait and when they land the rock slide they can actually uh sh double shield and um just counter all the way through which is something i learned here um if you shield once so we'll take the shield advantage, um, we'll take that, but um, a little unfortunate that they're going to get so much farm out of us, um, even though we resist these counters. It's just Shadow Machamp, right? That damage is just insane. I think you see a lot of teams with Shadow Machamp on it. Um, it's really good against Larian Stunfisk, obviously, and then it's decently good against a lot of the Flyers as well. Uh, Dragonite, um, not so much Togekiss, but like Gyarados... Uh, Talonflame takes double dam d double super effective damage from Rock Slide. So yeah, Rock Slide just that secondary move on Machamp. I would definitely use it over Payback for sure because it just has so much utility against the things that it's really bad against. And while Payback has utility against uh, Psychic, which which Fighting is bad against, it's just not the same. Um, yeah, because there's not so many Psychics here. So what I decided to do is here in against the Venusaur is what I like to do is Dragon Pulse then swap or get energy and then swap, so that you can get a second Dragon Pulse later if you end up in a bad matchup, which obviously Charizard is pretty good against Crafty here. And we can come in Ampharos after this matchup's done. Crafty's obviously going to lose uh, if they throw Blast Burn. And we don't have shields, so there's no reason for them not to. And then we come in Ampharos, farm down, and then throw another Dragon Pulse, which will two Dragon Pulse will KO the uh, Venusaur there. So this Blast Burn will take us out, and I, like I said, we'll get two Volt Switches in on this Charizard. Uh, hopefully they don't have a Blast Burn, but I can't imagine they do. Um, Dragon Breath really doesn't produce energy quite that well, and we literally are right at the Dragon Pulse. Perfect to take out this Venusaur. So we went 3-2 this set. Um, I had some, well, I apparently didn't record my rating at the end of the games, which I usually do. I usually like to show us getting the... Uh, prizes and then the rating at the end. I show the prizes here, but uh, forgot to show the rating. I think I ended up at like 25, 60 something at, at the end of this set, which again was the second set that I used uh, this team with two three twos at this point. And then one more set, which I'm about to show of me using this team as well, which I also think I forgot to show the um, <laughs> the uh, the rating, but I think in the intro I showed the rating on the intro screen. Uh, and I think it was, well, I don't want to spoil it, even though it was spoiled already. You can just wait to the end. All right, Ampharos into Obama Snow. This is uh, not great. We can maybe do the same thing. Uh, we definitely have to stand because Crafty is the only real counter. Uh, we're going to do the same thing we did to the... Um... Oh, no, I went straight for Dragon Pulse. Okay, my thinking here was they know I'm not at 5, so this is not the Focus Blast, so hopefully they don't shield it. They end up shielding it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually going to let Ampharos go down and then just hope Scrafty has some decent matchups in the back or Venusaur does. Venusaur probably beats both Pokemon in the back. And it's actually decent against uh, Obama Snow if I can get an energy advantage. Oh, I would hope to throw off that Thunder Punch there, but obviously we didn't make it. And then I have the Scrafty. They have a little bit of energy here. They're, this is probably a Weather Ball. Uh, so I'm not going to shield it. Probably not going to shield the Energy Ball either if it were. I'm um, just going to try to preserve the shield and hope that Venusaur can go the distance. 
So I actually think this ended up being the energy ball here. I didn't think they had this much energy, to be honest. Oh, this was a weather ball, actually. Okay. Still didn't think they had this much energy. And then they come with Ampharos. I get a little bit more farm, but then I throw in the Venusaur. This is obviously a good matchup. Now we do see that they are purified. So if they go up to five, I will shield a return and just try to get as much farm as I can. Like I said, going into the Ampharos, not, uh, going into the Obama Snow matchups, not actually that bad because you do have a super effective move against it. Um, and we do have the shields to survive a uh, weather ball. So you see, I went up to two Frenzy Plants there. Um, I'm only one away from the Sludge Wave, and a uh, Sludge Bomb, sorry, and I'm going to use that against the Obama Snow, which is definitely coming back in. Yep. And they're out of energy, so we go for a little bit more farm, just in case they don't shield, although they probably will shield, because like I said, I assume whatever they have in the back is actually really bad against Venusaur. Could be Swampert. Uh, makes a lot of sense. I've seen Swampert and Obama Snow a lot together. Uh, they have decent coverage together. So I'm going to shield. It could also be Empoleon. Empoleon would be decent. Um, you'd have a fighting weakness in the front and back, though, so maybe not that. Ooh, and I ended up going into Scrafty here at the same time that they swapped. So that's probably not good for us. Uh, it would have been nice to stand because now they're going to overfarm. Maybe? Maybe we can get to another foul play if they count incorrectly, but my guess is they're going to overfarm and do a ton of damage to us. They did overfarm a bit. They have a second Hydro Cannon here. Now's the question of do I farm down or do I throw a move? I end up throwing a move here, and that's going to cost me because obviously we farmed at the same rate that the Obama Snow farmed at. Farmed at. So the Obama Snow is going to be at a move here, and I'm definitely going to go down. I should have definitely... Uh, it didn't matter, because if I try to farm down, I think we're actually in Hydro Cannon range right now, and they'll obviously get a Hydro Cannon. They might have even gotten an Earthquake. I mean, we would have needed three or four more Fine Whips, and that would have been tough. All right, game two. This is against the guy who is second on the leaderboard, end of season um, end of season six. I think he ended second on the leaderboard. Shadow Machamp. And this guy, this Shadow Machamp's literally everywhere. I remember this game's pretty crazy. So, like I said, we stand with the Ampharos, we throw the Thunder Punch, and then we try to dip and catch a move. Um, like I said, it works about 40% of the time. Uh, I remember this game, it did not work. So, they actually end up going for a ton more farm here before swapping, I think. Oh, no, they didn't. Okay, they bring in the Obama Snow, but we have a little bit of an energy advantage. So, I'm going to go straight for the Sludge Bomb. does about 65-70%, which is good for us. Yeah, about 70%. Um, will a Frenzy Plant KO from here? I am going to try for it uh, because I think they're counting our moves and I don't want them to get the max energy. So we might take a shield here. Um, then we'll be at a shield advantage. So that's pretty good for us. We have actually a 2-0 to zero shield advantage. This Obama Snow has a billion energy. Uh, we're going to let it KO us here since it was a CMP tie, but they actually super undercharge it so that they can farm us all the way down. This is an insane play by our, by our opponent. Um, makes sense uh, because, yeah, obviously um, they want to have all the energy that they can considering that they're going into um, a shield disadvantage for it. So I decide I'm just going to eat all the energy here on the Scrafty, and I think this time is actually the Weather Ball Energy Ball that I was getting confused with. Yep. Is this the energy ball? Yep, that's the energy ball. <laughs> and then they switched to Machamp. I switched instantly to this. Uh, I decided to shield because I know it has two moves. And I know I can get some Volt Switch damage in to bring this Machamp a little lower. Obviously, our Scrafty is super low. I actually might double shield here. We are very close to... That Volt Switch actually probably gave us... Um, Thunder Punch, and I'm going to do one more Volt Switch. I probably could have done two Volt Switches, but I don't want to get too greedy here. Um, we know the Obama Snow is pretty low. It actually might get KO'd by, by Volt Switches, uh, even though they're resisted. I'm going to get two off before they get a move, and then it's all a guess of what their last Pokemon is. I guess we want it to be a Water type. Okay, they bring in the Obama Snow. We get a ton of energy here. Even if it's Kingdra, we might be able to do some stuff. Okay, it does end up being Lapras, and we have two Thunder Punches. And I think that's enough to KO with the Shadow Ampharos here. So this is going to be GG's. I actually saw so many Lapras. Um, 
uh, Thursday is when I did the battles, I think, or Friday. I forget when I did these battles. I think it was Thursday. Um, I actually saw so many Lapras, and I don't think I've seen that many Lapras in, in um, Ultra Premier. You see Lapras a lot in Open Ultra, which I actually might try out some on the next video, or in a couple videos, I guess, um, because I actually like Open Ultra with the same team we've been using since Season 3, the Asian Milkman team. But uh, yeah. Okay, this time, no mess up. Switch to Venusaur. Okay, perfect. Things are already going better against the lead Galvantula than the last time. Uh, they'll CMP us here, and they win CMP, like we said before. Uh, Galvantula is a beast at CMP. You don't need to shield this. It does about 55-60%. The first lunge, you don't need a shield. Oh, no, actually, it does a lot less. Yeah, it does like 35-40. That's right, because you can take two and live. I do remember that now. Um, but obviously, we're reduced here, but they probably want to shield. They almost always shield that first. They really don't shield it. Okay, they made they made a liar out of me. All right, they're going to confuse us down here on the Glade, but we will make it to one Frenzy Plant for sure. Uh, they're going to get one more confusion through. But this Frenzy Plant's going to do a lot. They may shield. They might not shield, though, because they might want to just dump their energy onto the Ampharos and then come in with Galvantula again because it was obviously very good against it. Um, we will definitely shield the first move um, and hope it's not Leaf Blade. Well, they're farming up a ton, and we end up getting a Volt Switch through, which means even though they have energy for two moves, they can actually only get one move off because this damage will register after their Leaf Blade and KO the Gal Galade. So that's why I don't over farm y'all or try to farm up to two moves in a row uh, because this game glitches, and you have to work with the glitches. You can't just say, oh, it's a glitch. That glitch has been in this game for a while. You have to work with it. And I never... I almost... Okay, I do double up on moves sometimes, but almost never do I try to double up on moves, even if it's the most energy efficient thing to do, because this game messes up too many times to um, allow yourself to be in that situation where there's a chance where you could frustrate yourself. Okay, um, lots of lag happening here. Uh, we end up getting a third shield there, so that sucks for our opponent. Um, would we have lived that lunge? I'm not too sure. Uh, but I, I don't think it actually ends up mattering if I remember because the Scrafty comes in and hard counters their last Mon and uh, they wouldn't have ever done anything to the Scrafty anyways. Let Galvantula do whatever it needs to do against Scrafty. I usually don't shield that because we don't know what's in the back and we don't know if it has a super effective move against Scrafty. Plus they almost always go for the lunge and I want to counter it all the way down but with that lunge I decide I'm going to go for this power up punch. We're going to undo the lunge and try not to let this Galvantula get another move in on Scrafty. And I do believe we end up taking it out. And it is another Lapras in the back. So um, we're already back to even. Now we are pretty low, but we do have the shield. So we don't have to really worry about anything. Uh, Ice Beam is the fastest move that really... Well, Surf... Uh, surf plus the Ice Shards probably would do enough here. Uh, I'm not too sure. Obviously, this is... I've only played Scrafty so far in, let's see, probably nine sets. So I, I don't know all the matchups, obviously, but um, we're probably in Surf range plus the Ice Shards here for sure. Um, we could counter it down. We still also have the Ampharos, but I really don't want to bring the Ampharos back in because the only reason the Ampharos is alive is because the game glitched. And, uh, you know, I want to say GG, but obviously the game really failed our opponent there in multiple instances, so unlucky all right uh this is really good in the lead uh you know since volt switch is a four turn move versus the five turn move of flame charge you can always force a shield here if they do end up throwing an incinerate because you always get under it uh since you get first uh shot at it so they're never gonna be able to switch out on you in those instances and we'll probably match shields here this is obviously a good matchup for us so i don't know why they would want to stay in unless they also have another weakness to Ampharos, which leads me to believe Maybe Empoleon in the back. I've seen so much freaking Empoleon in this league. It's crazy. Um, Empoleon, Shadow Machamp are maybe what I think are the two most used Pokemon in this league from what I've seen. And I truly believe that. And there's a Shadow Machamp. And I'm going to guess there's an Empoleon in the back. I don't even remember recording this game the first time, but I'm just going to guess there's an Empoleon in the back because there freaking always is. <laughs> Okay, we do have the Venusaur for this, so that's not too bad. Um, I'll 
probably shield it. Maybe not. We're at full life. We can take a rock slide here. Maybe if we were at like 80%, I would shield this, but uh, we'll take this. If they stay in, most likely it, it could be a Swampert in the back uh, because I don't think you'd stay in at this point. And then I don't think they could have gotten to a rock slide here, so I don't think I shield this. They don't. They just don't have enough energy to have gotten to that. So if it isn't Empoleon, I'll need to switch straight to Scrafty and not mess around with Venusaur against Empoleon. Uh, especially since Venusaur is super low. I'll probably just switch anyways. It's another Lapras. <laughs> okay, I honestly forgot there was three Lapras in this set, but I did remember there was a ton of Lapras that day. All right, last last game against House Stark here. Uh, last time we played against House Stark, we had a different team. And if I remember right here, he also had a different team. Yeah, he's running the Gallade here. Oh, I remember this game as well. A little bit of an, again, unfortunateness um, here. We get a little desynced. I throw here, and I believe this was a fake CMP tie, or I think it was an actual CMP tie, but then the game didn't register it. And then I was able to get an extra volt switch in, and that's just a game changer there. Now we're ahead on energy, and we can get to this next Thunder Punch before they do. Uh, and now we're winning a matchup we probably shouldn't have been winning. And they should have caught there, but uh, the game's does this weird thing in the last few months where sometimes you'll press the move and if they switched at the same time it like doesn't register it have y'all run into that I, i've run into it a lot in the last couple months it seems like on a switch in it gives you your move back it doesn't th force a throw which uh obviously they threw right when we had the move so they would have caught a move here a little unfortunate again but it is what it is this game is kind of broken <laughs> Uh, we don't shield anything here on the Scrafty because we, they can only get to one wild charge. We were counting their moves. They were at nine. Uh, it takes 10 to get to two wild charges. So we end up KOing that. They're going to probably not come back in with Glade. Well, they might. But I don't. if they don't throw a move, we definitely make this foul play. Okay, they do throw a move. This is going to KO us for sure. We definitely can't come in Venusaur against this. But they're throwing their energy here. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of an energy advantage there on the Ampharos again. And I do have two Thunder Punches. They do have two shields. Oh, one shield, sorry. So if they do shield once, we'll go for the Thunder Punch again. Um, but they might just let this go and then come in their last matchup. Uh, I do have the Dragon Pulse. I know they shield it, but hype if they don't because it basically one shots. As soon as they shield this, switch to Venusaur, and they're out of shields, it's going to take two Frenzy Plants. And they don't have enough energy to get to an Octazooka and an Outrage, so I'll just shield the first move, because they'll never get to both. And then that's pretty much GG's. Um, yeah. Kingdra, another Pokemon that's very used. Now, this uh, Glade, I've seen a drop-off from, from the last couple seasons, but... Um, it's still around. Um, also, Magnezone is not a Pokemon you see too much being used. So um, props to House Stark for using that Mon. I know he loves Shadow Magnezone. I've seen him use it a ton in this league uh, in previous seasons. So yeah, that's the team. Um, like I said, I used many iterations of Scrafty teams. I had a Gengar team. Uh, it was Gengar, Scrafty, Umbreon, where Scrafty and Umbreon aren't fully excelled. Um, it is what it is. I don't have them. And then um, we tried Alolan Ninetales with Powder Snow. And you probably want Dazzling Gleam, although I was running um, the Psychic move, Psy Strike. I was running that move. And then um, with Scrafty and Snorlax. So uh, again, I think you could run something like Jellicent or Driftblim in the front with a Snorlax safe swap and a Scrafty finisher as well. But like I said, what you're running into is a lot of charmers in this league as compared to ultra, uh, to Great League. So it feels a lot harder to come back with Scrap or like, yeah, to take that shield advantage and convert it into a win with Scrafty because sometimes they just have something that doesn't care about your moves and doesn't need shields to beat you or doesn't even throw moves. They just fast attack you down. So, yeah, those, those are my uh, thoughts there on um, Ultra League. Those are the teams I've used. Uh, thank you all so much for the support that you give me on this channel, uh, especially those uh, on the Patreon, Marlon Date and Michael H. That screen will be coming up here shortly. I know you all have probably gotten used to it. And um, we're definitely, we, like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, we ended 2620. 
there's the spoilers again at the end. And then um, someone submitted me a video of them using Hypno, Double Dark, all of the things fully excelled. I have not looked at that video yet. I will try to record that tomorrow and get that to y'all. And um, yeah, I really am hoping to get a shadow, uh, not a shadow, a regular Hypno fully excelled next Ultra League, next time Ultra League comes around. Uh, I had about 200 XL um, after trading and uh, transferring everything, but um, yeah, we're going to get there. Uh, we're going to get there with the EVs and the Hypnos uh, at some point, uh, the EVs and the Drowsy Candy at some point. So look out well, while we're going to sh showcase someone else using the team. We're going to use the team eventually. It may, I, I, the next time Ultra League comes around, I promise you I'll use the team whether or not I have the XLs or not. So take me on that word and I'll see you on the next one.